Thank you very much. Hello and good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming here tonight to our uh, hopefully interesting, intriguing, um, health-related evening talking about uh, technology which is almost unknown in Australia. And uh, I'm pretty happy and uh, pretty motivated to get this topic to you tonight. And um, most of you don't know me because you probably uh, are invited for the first time. My name is Wolfgang Jaksch. You already an announced it perfectly with the Aussie accent. Thank you very much. I was born and raised in Germany, in Bavaria, a small village up in the mountains. Um, we are operating out of Switzerland. Maybe you know this country, very neutral, a lot of banks, a lot of money from people from abroad. A uh, pretty safe place, actually. And um, I also brought my wife with me. That's Veronica. She's standing up there. Hi, Veronica. <laughs> She's also involved in our, our business. We, we, we both met because we, we share the same passion, and that's car racing, believe it or not. You know, so uh, we do formula car racing since many, many years. Uh, we have both international FIA licenses, driving Formula One cars, Veronica Formula Two. We even compete in races. So that's pretty interesting, you know, when you have a, a marriage, when you have a relationship, and then on the, on the, on the racetrack you are opponents. So we sometimes have pretty tough times during race weekends. Um, the good thing is I'm, I mostly win, otherwise I would quit racing probably. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, just to give a little a bit of an idea, so um, we are always on the fast track when it comes to business. We travel the world. We started this world tour, tour about 12 days ago in the United States. Then we had a quick stopover in Switzerland for one night. Then we went to Hong Kong, Singapore, and now we are in Sydney, and tomorrow we go back to Switzerland again. And uh, our mission is to bring PMF technology to the people. I'm doing this since 23 years now, consistently the same thing. And people always ask me, how do you end it up with doing this PMF thing? Well, you probably know from life, everything has a story. And my actually my second life i always call it my second life my journey with pmf it uh, started 26 years ago at that time i was 26 years old so now you can figure all, figure out how old i am and at the age of 26 i was diagnosed with cancer at that time i have to tell you i was a professional hockey player ice hockey in europe that was my first career before i went into this and it hit me out of nothing because I felt a little knot on my hip and it was some kind of I was scared because it should not be there. So I went to the doctor, they did a quick examination, they sent me to the hospital, they did an ultrasound and they figured out there is something sitting there which should not be there. I was sent to the hospital and they cut off a tumor with the size of a fist. And it was diagnosed with a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. At that time, I was between stage 3 and stage 4. Statistically, 26 years ago, I was 70% dead. I'm a very positive person. I'm a very... Uh, uh, I love life. So I realized right at the moment that I was still 30% alive. Which was the good part, <laughs> you know? And uh, thank you. And that's how my how the journey of my second life began. Because I went through the whole medical practices. They did two surgeries on me. The first one, they removed the tumor. The second one, they opened me from here to here completely. They took out the entire lymph string to check out if there are already metastases. Um, and then they, they uh, treated me with full stage of chemotherapy. Bottom line, I lost 45 kilos in three months. So I was a different person, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. It was a completely different situation. 
And after they did the last treatment, I left the hospital. And I'm not sure if you, uh, some of you already had this experience, if you were suffering from a very severe disease and the classical medical field, by the way, I'm not against classical medicine because without them I would not be here tonight. Just to make it clear, because I had a, a, a great team of surgeons who took off the tumor, I had a great team of people taking care of the second surgery. The mortality rate of the surgery is 1%. So that means one person out of 100 does not wake up after this big surgery they did on me. I belong to the 99s, so I woke up and uh, it, took me, it took 12 hours, the surgery. But like I said, you know, I was not the same person. I was, I was looking in the mirror, I couldn't, I couldn't recognize myself anymore. And, and then you leave the hospital after the last, last treatment and you're more or less alone with your thoughts, with your emotions. And cancer is a very tricky disease because you never know whether this devil will hit you again. And with this kind of mindset, it's not so easy to perform life. You either deal with it, some people, they, they, they neglect it, they try to, you know, to, to just not to think about this, to put it aside. Um, I took a different route because I wanted to know everything about this disease so that I understood at that time what was going on with me. And I also was looking for solutions to support my willingness to proactivity to protect myself from another cancer attack in terms of what can I do? Do I have to eat different? Do I have to um, exercise in, in some way? And what kind of modalities are available which could eventually help me and my, my emotions to, to become proactive and to do the right thing? You know, with the, with, the, with the goal to calm me down and just keep on doing what I'm doing and, and, and moving forward. And at that time, it was not so easy because Auntie Google was not on the market yet. We didn't even have smartphones at that time. So gathering information, you know, um, looking for education was more or less connected with a lot of efforts. You had to go to libraries to look for books, you had to go for seminars, for congresses, for all kinds of stuff which is related to, yeah, to, uh, in, 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 my, in, in my special case, to uh, prevention, preventive modalities, uh, to strengthen my entire body. I figured out I was highly toxic because of the chemotherapy, so I figured out right away I need to get rid of these toxins. Nobody tells you from the classical medical world how to get rid of these toxins, you know? And even nowadays, about half of all cancer patients who had chemotherapy, they die from the collateral damage which is caused by the high toxins of the chemotherapy and not from the primary cancer. So, you know, and I, I just didn't want to become ill again. When you are 26, you think about partying, girls, you know, preparing your future, but you don't think about dying tomorrow. And I was not ready to go, I tell you. And so, I was visiting lectures like you did tonight, or you do tonight. I was uh, uh, signing up for con congresses for holistic medicine, you know, all that kind of stuff. And somehow I ended up on a lecture and the guy who did the lecture, he introduced PEMF technology, pulsed electromagnetic field technology, which at that time when I was on recovery was first introduced to the public. And it was in this nice small country of Austria. And the guy did a pretty good job. He did a lecture, about one and a half hour, explaining what PMF can do for you and what kind of benefits you can expect when you use it in the comfort of your home on a consistent basis. 
And on a consistent basis means two times per day between 8 and 24 minutes. So not so much efforts. Yeah? And I was just convinced because everything what the guy told made total sense to me. And it, I'm pretty pragmatic. If something makes total sense to me, I'm go for it. And that's how I got introduced first to, to, to this technology during my recovery. I started implementing PMF technology into my personal proactivity recovery uh, uh, routine, which I did after I left the hospital. I was also drinking a lot of water. Um, I, figured, I found in Mexico, I found some good nutritional products from roots, from trees, some herbal products, which I took. Main goal was to get rid of the toxins first. And I, I was also suffering from insomnia after the chemotherapy because uh, it just I couldn't sleep anymore, you know. And losing 45 kilos, uh, going through two surgeries, a complete stage of chemotherapy, and then not sleeping, that's not a nice combination. That's not the environment you need to recover. So, um, the guy at that lecture, he mentioned that PMF helps to improve sleep. That was the trigger for me. Not all the other stuff, but that was actually the trigger for me. And, um, and so I bought one of these units and I used it. And after four weeks, it didn't happen so much to me, but I started improving my sleep. And I had days where I slept 12 to 14 hours, which then when I woke up, um, created a very pleasant uh, uh, sensation in my emotions and in my, my feelings because I realized my body is able to recover. So that was a very subjective, but a very intense feeling for me. And then I realized that, wow, it looks like that I can become 100% healthy again because it seems that my body is responding somehow to what I'm doing. So that was very motivating for me and I kept on going. I just did a lot of water, some herbal products and PMF. That's all I did in my recovery because I didn't find anything else what fit to my expectations. And after three months I was, the first thing was I emotionally recovered 100%. So I was not carrying these thoughts about coming, will the cancer come back on a daily basis, which helped me a lot, I tell you. And the second thing was I started gain weight. I started, you know, my appetite came back, my, my, my physical strength came back, my energy came back. And within six months, I was really energetically and emotionally 100%. The only thing was I was physically not strong enough because it just needed a lot of time, more time, because I lost so much physical substance. Nevertheless, this personal experience that captured me in a way that I started investigating about this technology. And I would never, never, ever say that it healed my cancer, for sure not, because the system is not designed to do that. So don't take me wrong, you know, we'll never uh, use this claim. However, I think it was one of the key modalities I put into the, my, my recovery regimen, which probably helped my body in such a profound way to increasing its self-healing capacity that I was able to fully recover from that cancer. And I'm here today telling you that my cancer never came back. I'm probably the most thankful person on this planet. And beside of being healthy at the age of 52 now, being active, doing a lot of stuff, um, I, I got the gift that I could start a business with a technology which probably was also responsible for saving my life, getting my energy back, and I could make a living out of it. And uh, since then, I'm on a mission. I, the unit I bought at that time, it was not very well designed. It was working, but I didn't like the design. I'm a pretty, a pretty uh, uh, aesthetic person, so I was looking at it, and I said, I could maybe do this a little better. I started my own journey um, doing research, reading a lot, 
and collecting all this information. And then I started to create my first unit, which was uh, 1997. And, and from then I went from Germany over Switzerland, Austria, um, to the European countries in 2006 to North America, Canada and, and, and the USA, in 2012 to Asia, and last year finally came to Down Under to Australia. And um, whenever I hit a new territory, I figured out that people don't know anything about PMF. Because it's, it's more or less a European thing, and you know sometimes it takes a while until it spreads out. And um, we introduced uh, to no, uh, PMF to North America, became very successful there, and uh, we will definitely do our best to educate you guys here in Australia um, to probably get introduced to the most profound holistic healing method which is available on planet Earth as of today. And the, the goal for this evening, the lecture is about five hours, so it's not so long. No, 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 three and a half. <laughs> no, 60 minutes, okay? I, I try to speak fast, okay? No, uh, we will, it will take about 60 to 70 minutes. Um, th the problem with PMF, it's a very complex physical method. And the, 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 the difficulty is to translate all this into a language that everybody is understanding that. And I think this is uh, the... Uh, the skill I have that I'm capable of doing that so that you get the, the right knowledge and the right understanding in order to figure out if this is something you would like to dig a little bit deeper into it or give it a try um, or, or you know getting this intrigued the same way than I did. Um, the problem nowadays is we live in a society which is exquisitely dependent on science and technology in which hardly anyone knows anything about science and technology. Whenever somebody says science found out that, people are already convinced. Right? Show me the study. You know, when it comes to medically related uh, modalities, well, is there a study about it? If you say yes and you show them any kind of piece of paper, they are convinced. Because 99.9% .9 cannot even read a medical study. No? We're not talking about evaluating it, you know? Uh, but this is, this is how our society is programmed. And when it comes to um, physical medicine, when, when, whenever physics is involved, it becomes even even more difficult because <laughs> never trust an atom, they make up everything. <laughs> so every, everything into energy medicine is actually uh, goes back to the smallest building block, which is an atom, which is pretty tough science and physics, which most of us don't understand. And even the classical medical world does not understand today how this thing works because physics and energy medicine is not yet part of the education in medical faculties. It's a shame, but it is what it is. You know, did you ever ask yourself why there is no heart cancer in the world? Well, every organ gets affected by cancer. Why not the heart? <laughs> because there is so much energy in this organ. It has no time to do anything else than its job. To keep our systems alive. It's based on energy. And believe it or not, except a, 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 a a couple reported cases of heart cancer which are all related to a DNA problem, so a genetic prob problem, the heart never turns into a malignant situation. And it's because the energy in the heart is so high, 
in the heart cell that it will never come up with the idea to do anything else than to take care of keeping the organ 100% healthy. So next time when you go to, to your cardiologist, ask him, tell me why there is no heart cancer in the world? And then wait for the answer. There will be no... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the cardiologists don't, you know? Yes. <laughs> so we talk tonight about energy. We talk in particular about pulsed electromagnetic fields. And when you hear electromagnetic, normally you think it has something to do with ele electricity and with magnetism, right? But it's a little bit more than that, because in, 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 in modern times, electromagnetic fields are around, are around us in any, any kind of different ways. We also know electromagnetic fields, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, for example. Uh, if you don't know what Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is, I give you a little bit of a nice explanation, which you probably, uh, uh, an NLG, which you probably uh, will use in the future to easily explain the difference. Bluetooth is more like, like man's behavior. He is connected to you when you are nearby, but searches for other devices when you are away. So man is more the Bluetooth, and the women is more the Wi-Fi part. She sees all available devices, but finally connects only to the strongest one. Both signals are signals out of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? But there are more energy fields which belong to the electromagnetic spectrum and which we probably didn't even think about yet. For example, we, we mentioned already Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, microwaves, high frequency technologies, gamma rays, x-rays, you know it from, from, uh, from the doctor's office when you have to go and make a nice picture because you have a, a, a broken bone or something like that, they use x-rays. An x-ray is an electromagnetic field with a certain frequency range. We have visible light, it's an electromagnetic field. We have infrared, UV light, radar, UHF and VHF, radio frequencies. Those are all frequencies out of the electromagnetic spectrum. So if we talk about electromagnetic fields, we not only limit it to electric fields and magnetic fields, this is actually the entire spectrum. So it covers a much wider area than we probably thought it will. The the thing about electromagnetic waves is, in terms of whether they create a harmful effect or whether they create a health beneficial effect, it is mostly related to the characteristic and the property of the field. So that means certain frequencies, certain intensities of an electromagnetic field, they can harm you and where others they can create a beneficial health effect. Where others, for example, like for example MRI, magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging, is also an electromagnetic field, but the purpose of this field is not to create a health beneficial effect and not to create a harming effect, but to make a picture from inside your body. Uh, so, depending on the, on the properties of the field, you can define what an electromagnetic field should do for you or for, 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 a, for, a, uh, for a device. Very important. Electromagnetic field is not equal electromagnetic field. It depends on the applied properties. And we can even harm with electromagnetic fields. Did you ever uh, use your smartphone and call somebody longer than half an hour? Women usually do that. So what, <laughs> what are you experiencing when you do that? It gets warm and it starts itching and, and some people even experience headaches. And you know why? Because the frequency and intensity range out of this electromagnetic field, that creates a negative resonating effect with your tissue. You know, it literally heats up your tissue and sometimes it even creates pain. 
So that's not the effect we would like to achieve when we apply an electromagnetic field. So an electromagnetic field can harm, but an electromagnetic field can also create a tremendous health benefit, but the properties have to be different. We will learn a little bit later what the properties are. But just to give you an idea, so, you know, it's the same like with uh, uh, snake poison. Snake poison can heal or can kill you. It depends on the dose. And it's the same with electromagnetic field. They literally can even kill you. Microwaves, for example. Microwaves can kill you. You know, if, if you get exposed to a high dosage of microwaves over a certain period of time, you will be well done. <laughs> so this is important to know about electromagnetic fields. So we use a physical term which is called electrodynamics. Um, and there is a, a physical law, Ampere's, Ampere's law, Ampere's circuit law, which says the property of a changing electric field always induces a pro proportional magnetic field around it. So in layman terms, when you send current through a wire, you always create a magnetic field around it. This is an electromagnetic field. So whenever you plug something into the wall, which has a wire, no matter what it is, you always create a magnetic field around the wire. That's electromagnetism. So this is, by the way, also the basic technology what we utilize in our systems because our systems, the applicators, are containing of copper coils, uninsulated copper coils, and we send current through these copper coils in a very defined and controlled way. And around these copper coils, a magnetic field is created. So, past electromagnetic field technology has nothing to do with magnets. Okay? There is not one magnet built inside. That's a totally different story. A static magnet, you, you, you know what I'm talking about, you know, a simple static magnet has no frequency and it doesn't pulse. It's not comparable in any way with what we are doing. He's raising the volume. I get him. I, don't, I understand him. I get the content even if he speaks a little bit more calm. So think about what I did right now in, in, in 30 seconds. When I change the intensity of an electromagnetic field, I also de can determine if I create destruction or if I create something pleasant, harmony. It's just playing with the volume, with the intensity, not even touching the frequency, the content. Okay? So never mix up frequency and intensity. Frequency is the content of the information and intensity is the volume of the content of the information. Understood? Good. And then we have the waveform, the carrier. This is very simple. When you build a house and you have, let's say, 10,000 bricks here, and there is the spot where you want to build the house, you have two options to get the bricks to the house, to the, to the, to the building spot. You can do it brick by brick, one at a time, which is pretty time consuming, yeah, and which is pretty inefficient. Or you can use a crate, go there, load 50 bricks, bring the crate there, unload it, and then you can start building with 50 bricks at a time, which is more efficient time-wise. And it's also, you, you, you get more information or more content from one spot to the other. And this is the so-called carrier. This is the waveform. In which way and in which, uh, um, in, in, in which amount we deliver an electromagnetic signal from the sender to the receiver. Understood? Yes. Good. And then we have the secondary properties. The secondary properties is 
how are these electromagnetic fields understood by the receiver and even maybe go a step further, how can the receiver turn this into action? In order to do that, we need induction. So that means we need to have a certain force in order to initiate the receiver to react on that. A good example from daily life is when you swipe your credit card and you don't swipe it fast enough, it will not take the information because it doesn't create enough induction. So sometimes you have, it, you have to do it two, three times with a certain velocity and a, and a certain speed in order to create the necessary induction to get the information out of the card into the, the cashier or whatsoever. You know? And the same with electromagnetic fields. If we would like to, to create an effect on the receiver, we have to make sure that we apply a certain force that the receiver is capable of taking this and create action out of it. The second one is resonance. Resonance is very important when we talk about energy medicine in general. Resonance, by the way, is also important when we talk about the highest level of resonance in regular life. Do you know what the highest level of resonance in regular life is? Love. It's very simple, you know? You know, why do people fall in love? It's a good question, right? You know, you are single, you walk on the street, and then you see her right there. And without knowing her, without ever speaking a word to her, bang, boom, pow, you know? <laughs> why does this happen? This is a good question, right? No interaction, and it, it, it happens. Well, you know, this is a phenomenon which is still not understood by Newton's physics because we cannot prove it with Newton's physics. What happens here? You know, it's impossible. There is no equation for that. We have to look a little bit further into quantum physics to understand that. We have to put some energy in place which we cannot, you know, we cannot capture yet. In quantum physics, these little uh, 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 energy parts are called quarks, you know? And this is, it's just, you know, that's why classical medicine doesn't understand energy medicine, because it's based on quantum physics, and they never learned this. Uh, but uh, even Albert Einstein was already into quantum physics. And I, I, I want, I just came to my mind, did it ever happen to you? You sit in a cafe, having your cappuccino, everything is fine, and then somehow you have the feeling that the person behind on the table is staring at you. Did it ever happen to you? So now explain this to me with Newton's physics. It does not make sense, right? You have no eyes here. So you, you actually have no chance to detect that but somehow you do. So, so we have probably more senses that we know because we cannot explain more senses than we have with Newton's physics. And that's why, you know, the, the new physics in the future will be quantum physics. And it will be research and in 10, 20, 50 years we can explain all these phenomena by using quantum physics equations. Uh, and then we will also maybe understand why we fall in love with somebody. Or we will also understand a, a pretty nice example. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> you, you see what happens? It's like, what is he doing? <laughs> you, know, you know what I did? I was smiling at her. And you know what she did? She smiled back. I didn't ask her to do that. <laughs> right? Automatically, you know? This is cool, right? Yes. The equation huh? is you are sync with the other person. Ah, yeah. You are not sync with the other person. Even you smile 20 times, this person 
Well, yes and no. I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. I can do this with, 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 with each of you. You will always react the same way. Believe me. If you, we are not at the point where we are in sync with somebody. It's just we send out a signal and depending on how the signal is, you know, we create a reaction from the receiver. You know, and this is how energy medicine works. Do you get that? We have to send out a, a, a signal. If the signal is pleasant and if the signal can be understood by the receiver, they will give us a pleasant response. So if we, if we apply energy medicine on the human organism and this signal is pleasant, we will get a pleasant reaction, which we call resonance. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> and this is, this is the same with love and hate. So, and now you know these people. <sighs> the whole day, stressed, you know? Yeah, the people who, you know, did you know that it, it, it takes 15 muscles more to look angry comparing to look happy? It's very, it's on a, on a, you know, it's very energy inefficient to be sad, because because it takes more energy to look sad, because you have to move 15 muscles more, so you lose actually a lot of a lot of energy during the day just by looking like, like this. When you smile, you know, it's very energy efficient, and it's also, you know, what happens when you smile? A lot of people will follow you smiling the same way. So, so, you know, what you send is what you receive. So if you want to attract happy, successful, nice people in the future, you have to be happy, successful and nice. And then you will automatically attract these people. And this was always, always my life philosophy. You know, I'm always very outgoing. I talk to everybody. Veronica sometimes said, you cannot talk to these people all the time. I said, yeah, but that's me. You know, I'm, I'm, that, I'm that kind of person. And interestingly, I always attract the same people. And of course, if you walk through life like this, you, what do you think? Who is going to follow you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And now by knowing that it is even more energy efficient to smile than to look angry, you probably know what to do from tomorrow morning. You know, we, everything has to be efficient in modern times. Well, start being a little bit more energy efficient, be a nice, happy person, everything is fine. You know, and you will attract nicer people. And by the way, even your body will react on this. Believe me, when you are a happy person, when you have happy people around you, you will not be stressed all the time. You can deal much better with stress. And if you not attract so much, so much stress and let so much stress inside your organism, you will not become ill so often. This is how simple as it is. Because our body is a miracle on one hand, but on the other hand, you can prove a lot with physics what happens inside your body. So that's the way to go there. And that's what we call resonance. Resonance is the property to be able to answer on an external stimulus with a positive reaction. This is resonance. And then, if we create resonance, out of this resonance we create a biological effect. So, we can shift biological effects inside our body. We can, we can influence the cellular structure of our body to go from a pretty lame and static uh, status into a lively, into an active status. Does it make sense? That's energy medicine. And that's the philosophy of energy medicine. You know, sending an information which is understood by the receiver and which the receiver is capable of creating a resonating action. That's the biological effect. So, let's have a look now. What are the effects of electromagnetic fields on human organisms? 
And in order to do that, I brought this little, little chart here for you because, believe it or not, nature already provides us with a lot of electromagnetic fields from natural sources. Whereas one of it is the earth magnetic field. The earth magnetic field is a measurable electromagnetic field. By the way, it's pretty much researched and it's observed by more than 70 laboratories around the world on a daily 24 hour basis. So we know in modern times what is the strength of the earth magnetic field on Fiji Island, in Sydney, in Europe, in Switzerland, wherever, on a constant basis. Because the electromagnetic field of the earth is one of the most important and um, uh, health and, and, and life thriving energies we know. By the way, the earth magnetic field is caused by the, the fluctuation and the movement of liquid iron, which is part of the lava and the magma, inside the outer core of the earth. And Ampere's law, again, you know, you have iron, it's flowing, it creates a current, and, our, and wherever there is a current, there is a magnetic field. And that's the earth magnetic field. And we know nowadays even the frequency of the earth magnetic field. It's between 11.75 and 11.79 Hertz. Are you familiar with Hertz? He was a German physicist. One Hertz is one cycle per second. So the unit for frequency is Hertz. One Hertz is one cycle per second. So actually the earth magnetic field vibrates with 11.75 to 11.79 cycles per second. It's a very low frequency, a very, very gentle frequency field also in terms of intensity levels. The Earth magnetic field has a, a field strength of about 44 to 66 micro Tesla. Maybe you, you don't know about that, but I give you a comparison. A blow dryer, which you use to dry your hairs, emits an electromagnetic field strength of about 1,000 microtesla. So it's about 20 times stronger than the intensity of the earth magnetic field. So we talk about a pretty gentle field. But it was and it, it's, it's there since the beginning and humankind, mankind, evolved with it and developed with it. So it's a field we need and it's a field we are we are in sync with, let's say it like this. And there is another electromagnetic wave, maybe you heard about that, it's the so-called Schumann wave. Did you ever heard about that? The Schumann resonance? The Schumann resonance, by the way, it's called by the weather and the lightning strikes. The cool thing about Schumann is we have a pretty stable carrier frequency of exactly 7.83 Hertz within our ionosphere. The ionosphere is the space between the surface of the Earth and the exit to the stratosphere. That's the ionosphere. And there, within that field we have a vibration which is very stable. 7.83 Hertz. So those frequencies they are all in the low frequency sector. They seem to be very beneficial for us because we evolved with them. Does it make sense? And then in the modern times, we introduced smartphones to our environment. Statistically, every person on earth has a smartphone as of today. I think there are about 7 billion smartphones out. And we are right now at about 2.15 um, personal computers, billion. That's a lot, huh? And everybody is connected. And everybody is connected with a completely different frequency range. The carrier frequency of your smartphone 
is between 800 and 1900 megahertz. You know what mega means? A lot. One megahertz is one million hertz. One million cycles per second. So your smartphone, when you have it on your ear, vibrates between 800 and 1900 million times per second. That's a dramatic force. And that, by the way, creates the heat. It's the high frequency. Because it's not good for us. Not good for us. Um, the cordless home phones, by the way, are you using them? The cordless phones? They are in the gigahertz range. 2.3 gigahertz. As well as the satellite systems. And even the wall power, so the usually current, what we, what we, I think in, in, in Australia it's 50 hertz, or, isn't it? 60. 60. In Europe it's 50. Uh, so worldwide, the, 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 the usually uh, uh, frequency of the current is 50 to 60 hertz. If you look at these numbers, all these artificial electromagnetic fields, they are in a, in a higher frequency range than the natural ones. And imagine about 130 years ago, the entire planet was not introduced to any artificial electromagnetic wave until Nikola Tesla invented electricity. Because at that point, it was for the first time that artificial electromagnetic fields got introduced to our planet. And that changed the environment forever. Because nothing, almost nothing, would be possible without electricity. We would not have skyscrapers without electricity because we would not be able to use the elevators which run on electricity, and so on and so on. So, smartphones, computers, everything is based on electricity. And electricity is based on artificial electromagnetic waves. So, by introducing more and more of these artificial fields, the natural fields are already so disturbed and interfered that this nice green cloud is not there anymore. And what happens to the children, to the newborn children? They, were born, they are born with allergies, with all kinds of unspecific diseases, which we give them nice names, but we don't know why and, and, and how they evolve and stuff like that. Allergy is number one right now. About 50, 60 years ago, we, we didn't know about allergies because there was nothing to be allergic against. But now the food quality diminishes. The water quality is horrible. The, 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 the entire electromagnetic environment, you know, children, they grow up with the tablet in front of them. You know, two days ago we went to, uh, to lunch. I made two pictures because I said it's very interesting. Two families were sitting for lunch with two children each. Both children were in front of the iPad and the parents were using their smartphone. Nobody, nobody was looking at the other and, and, you know, and that happened for the whole lunchtime. And it was two tables, right Veronica? with two families and exactly the same. You know, beside the effect that you lose social skills, that's what the children do right now, because they, uh, they cannot articulate them anymore, you know, because they only watch, watch these nice uh, uh, whatever, what's on YouTube or what's on Netflix or whatsoever. They already speak that language, you know, and they lose the, the social skills and they are constantly exposed to artificial electromagnetic fields. You know, it, the result is all kinds of unspecific diseases and disturbances. The reason for that is because we are not designed to live in this kind of environment. And maybe in 100 years or in 100,000 years, we start evolving with it. Maybe we, we start growing antennas which tells us, oh, don't stay here because the electromagnetic field is not good, the frequency is too high, you have to go aside. 
You laugh, but that's gonna maybe happen. Huh? But right now, we have not even an organ to detect whether we are exposed by an electromagnetic field or not. Right? For example, I have an organ here. This is an electromagnetic detector. I can detect electromagnetic fields with this little thing. So for example, can you hear that? Makes a little bit of noise. If I go to, to, this, to this power plug, can you hear that? That's electromagnetism what you hear. So by hearing this, would you sit two hours beside that? Probably not anymore. If we, would have, if we would have the antenna, we would stay away. But we don't carry that always with us. You know? But did you even know that you carry stuff with you which you never thought that it will create an electromagnetic field? Huh. Let me check your watch. Let me check your watch. That must be a Swiss watch, right? It's good. It's a good one. Let's check another one. It's not his heartbeat. He, he gets an electromagnetic shock from his watch every second, but he doesn't know it. Huh? Right? <laughs> because this watch creates an electromagnetic field. There's probably a battery built in. Yeah, a Swiss watch doesn't have a battery, no electromagnetic field. That's why these watches are so expensive. Because they are healthy. Other watches to try? Who wants to throw away the watch? <laughs> Yeah? Okay, let's go here. Swiss watch? No. <laughs> you hear it? So my heartbeat is... No, it's not your heartbeat. <laughs> it's the watch. It's the watch. Definitely. I can check. Yeah, I can. Throw it away. Throw it away? Not qualified. <laughs> Oh, it's good, okay. <laughs> Not qualified. What about a digital one? Well, let's have a look. Not too bad, huh? Not too bad. Um, somebody has a smartphone? I prefer iPhone 11 Pro. <laughs> So here we have a regular iPhone. It's constantly emitting. And nobody calls. Huh? So the, the, the phone, when it's, even if it's not connected to the provider, the phone, if it's not even connected to the provider, emits a constant high frequency electromagnetic field. You know? And when you carry that with you, you are constantly exposed to that. So, I show you something. I have to do it from here, for all the men in the audience. Don't do this. Okay? Because you're very close to your second brain, And if you constantly expose your second brain to artificial electromagnetic fields, you will lose performance. And also, don't do this. This is the worst you can do. If you really, if you really beg for a heart attack, do that. I see men, they, they carry their... their uh, a smartphone constantly in the, in, the, in, the, in the breast pocket, preferably on the side where the heart is, because it's more effective. Uh, don't do this anymore, because you are constantly exposed to an artificial electromagnetic field. Not good. Yeah? And who, whose phone was it? Thank you very much. So those are just little things to, to wake you up a little bit because 
it becomes so usual for us and it becomes a routine for us that we don't think about these things anymore. You know, don't use your smartphone as an alarm clock on your nightstand. Wait, questions at the end, please. You can do it, but what do you have to do? Put it on flight mode. Because if you don't put it on flight mode, it will be constantly looking for a connection to the provider. And those smartphones, they get even worse when the signal becomes weak. They amplify the, the, the reception. So the smartphone has a built-in intelligence when the, when the incoming signal to the provider becomes weak, the, the, the smartphone amplifies the signal. So it will become even worse. And if you use a smartphone beside on the nightstand, you know, you can do this as an alarm clock, but please put it on flight mode. Or put it away at least two to three meters from the bed. If you don't do this, you will have no good sleep. You know, if you don't sleep well and you use the smartphone as an alarm clock, just do a trial for one week, put it on flight mode, and I promise you, you will sleep much better. I promise you. And better also in the meaning that you get a better REM sleep, which is actually the phase during the sleep where your body is recovering. Because I know people, they sleep for 10 hours, but they cannot recover because they cannot reach this deep REM phase in their sleep where the body can really recover. Versus the people who need only five hours and they are totally fit in the morning because they reach this deep sleep. No? This is very important. So try to take this to heart. So is this understood more or less? So as a summary, electromagnetic fields can be used for health beneficial effects if the properties are in a... Otherwise, if they are out of the window, they can harm you or they can have no effect at all. And by understanding that our environment around us is changing constantly towards more and more artificial, it is our utmost goal to create a natural environment as best as possible in order to counteract this. And by the way, this is one of, the, one of the, the, the effects you can reach with the PMF system. Because uh, a, a, a state-of-the-art modern PMF system exposes only frequencies and its harmonics out of the uh, natural frequency ranges and intensity ranges. So that's very important. <coughs> PMF in medicine. I mentioned it already, we can use past electromagnetic fields for diagnostics. The uh, example would be an MRI or for very specific treatments, for example, RTMS. It's the shortcut for repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. It's a pretty new approach utilizing past electromagnetic fields in patients with suffering from depression. Very powerful and very, very uh, 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 efficient. Actually, the patients get exposed to a high electromagnetic field in a very narrow frequency range to the brain and it, it, it works more or like a reset of the brain and it's very effective against depression. And then we can use magnetic resonance stimulation and, and the waves for treatment. That's what we do with our PMF technology. So we create an application which you utilize to change the properties inside the body. Which ones I will explain in a couple of minutes. Our products are mainly in the, in the field of low pulsed PMF. So we use extremely low pulsed electromagnetic fields. We talk about the Pico and the Micro Tesla range. Very gentle, same intensity than the earth magnetic field. And those are not only widely researched, we have about 
12,000 scientific publications about low-pass PMF and its health benefits. That's a lot, you know? So they are not only widely researched, but they are also considered to be extremely safe and effective for various health conditions. The good thing about these PMF devices, you can not harm. So when you use this technology, there is no side effect. Even if you lie on this for the whole day, no side effect. Because we use only natural frequencies and intensity levels. So what is the main uh, benefits you can expect from a PMF device if you use it for, for, uh, for your health benefit? Um, during, uh, according to the studies which we evaluated, according to the medical research, and also according to the feedback of about 1.5 million users worldwide during the last 20 years, those are mostly the conditions where you can expect very good results while implementing PMF even in the comfort of your home. Pain relief, insomnia, non-union fractures, bed sore, strengthening the immune system, balancing and improving the entire metabolism, stress relief, bioenergetics, so uh, that means balancing your energetic levels, circulation and perfusion, so you can optimize blood circulation and perfusion while using uh, PMF and it can also be used as an accompanying uh, application for all kinds of, uh, of treatments which are offered by the classical medicine. I, I mentioned my case was uh, the, 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 the post-cancer recovery. I used it for detox, for example. You know, to, 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 to faster, uh, for a faster detoxification. So those are the things you can implement the PMF, PMF technology. And now I would like to show you how this works. Maybe I'll even go here on stage because I would like, for all the people who are really interested in that, make a picture of that slide because this is the most important message today. I can explain it with one slide. So actually what you see here, that's a human cell. The humans, all human cells, whether it's a hair cell, a heart cell, a liver cell, a kidney cell, a bone cell, they all have the same basic structure. By the way, the cell is the smallest building block inside our entire organism. A lot of single cells together create tissue. A lot of tissue together in an intelligent way create an organ. A lot of organs together in an intelligent way create an organ system. So whenever we experience disease, everything starts here on a cellular level because this is the smallest building block. Even cancer starts here. Cancer always starts when the cell doesn't do its job anymore when the DNA of the cell goes into a self-destroying mode because maybe the cell doesn't get enough supply of nutrients, minerals, oxygen or the cell is already toxified by wrong food intake, by uh, uh, environment, working environment, a lot of dust, lots of toxins, whatsoever. This all affects the smallest building block, our cell. And this is a very powerful sentence here. There is no chemistry without energy. And this is so true because the classical medical field, everything is based on chemistry. Everything is based on chemical reactions. Whenever you take a medication, it's chemical. But in order to create or to maintain chemical processes, we need energy for that. Energy comes first. There is no chemistry without energy. And why? I will explain you with this slide. So what you see here, this is the, the cell. In the, in the middle here we have the so-called nucleus. The nucleus is the core of the cell and inside the nucleus we have the so-called DNA. This is actually the software, the genetic code, what the cell has to do. Whether it becomes a hair cell, whether it becomes a bone cell, whether it becomes a kidney cell, and so on and so on. This is programmed here. 
genetic. Then here we have the so-called cell membrane. The cell membrane is, um, is a structure, a membrane structure, um, which is permeable. So it's capable of letting things in and getting rid of things. And in our terms, in under, uh, to get a full understanding how metabolism works, it's very simple. The cell has, everywhere has receptors. And these receptors, they are capable of recognizing, for example, minerals, nutrients, oxygen. Once they, they recognize a molecule, let's say a receptor for oxygen, it captures the, the oxygen and lets it inside into the cell. Inside the cell, so between the membrane and the nucleus, we have a lot of little power plants, which we call mitochondria. Those mitochondria, they absorb everything what we eat, drink and breathe. And then they turn it into energy. They are power plants. This energy is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy which thrives and survives. So, when everything is working properly, so that means when we supply a lot of good minerals, a lot of good nutrients, and a sufficient amount of oxygen, we, we care for the best conditions in order to maintain a metabolism on the highest level. And now comes the but. But all these things are only working with these little bubbles here. And these little bubbles are so-called ions, I-O-N. Ions are responsible in our entire body system to move in and outside the cell. And by doing that, they create an electric potential. You, you must know about ions because you carry them on a daily basis with you. Because they are part of your smartphone because you have a built-in lithium-ion battery, right? And it's nothing else in your battery. There are these little bubbles and they are covered into lithium. And whenever you charge them with your charger, you create a magnetic field which forces these ions to move inside the lithium. And whenever ions move, they create an electric potential. And this is how your battery charging works. So you force the ions in your lithium battery to move inside and by doing that they create an electric potential. And that charges your battery. And by the way, this is exactly the same procedure what happens energetically in each of your 70 trillion cells you contain of, depending a little bit on size and weight but on average it's about 70 trillion. So when these ions move, they create the membrane potential. Every cell is positively loaded outside and negatively loaded inside. The better the membrane potential, the better the capability of absorbing the minerals, the nutrients and the oxygen, the better the capability of turn this into ATP. So in layman terms, if you create a good electric potential around your cells and you provide the body with a lot of good minerals, nutrients and an, a good portion of oxygen, your metabolism is running on a very high level. And that means the cell cannot do anything else than to produce energy. Does it make sense to you? Okay, and now the only question we have to answer is, How are we going to create or how are we going to force these ions to move, right? And I tell you, this is very simple. Can you hear that? This is exactly what happens when you move over the earth magnetic field. By moving, you create induction. And this induction is sufficient enough to to kick these butts of the ions and they start moving and they start creating the membrane potential. 
That, that explains also why people who move a lot have a better metabolism, right? That's why, why athletes burn much more calories than regular people because the membrane potential of a, of a, of a sports athlete of a, or of a person who is exercising a lot is much higher. And therefore, the capability of metabolizing is much higher. And therefore, the production of ATP is higher, which then leads to a more health beneficial effect in, your, in each of your 70 trillion cells because you always have a lot of energy inside you. So, we are designed to move 25 kilometers a day. And I'm not talking about Toyota or Mercedes-Benz or BMW, I mean left leg and right leg. That's why we have these tremendous muscles here. We don't need them for sitting in the office. They bother us. Those are made for using them. And we are definitely designed to walk 25 kilometers a day. That's what we did in the past. And now we don't do it anymore. That's why we have chronic back pain. That's why we have all these things, because it's all what we do is more or less against our, our, our uh, uh, basic design. And that's why we suffer from chronic stuff on an uh, ongoing basis. So, now I want to make you aware of something which is pretty cool. Remember that when you walk, right? You always create this impulse. Sunday afternoon, couch potato, three movies on Netflix. I hear nothing. Okay, let's go to the fridge and get a beer. At least a little bit, you know. Every little induction helps our metabolism to work better. So the more, or let's say the less we exercise, now you know what happens inside your cell, cellular level. You know, your, 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 your ability to create or to produce ATP diminishes. And that's why, what's very interesting, you can, you can actually lie down for five hours doing nothing and then you get up and feel tired, which makes no sense because you didn't do anything. But the reason for that is because you don't produce any ATP during that time. So, and now, Listen what happens when you, for example, now you decide you lie on one of these devices, okay? Can you hear that? Happy ions. Actually, when you lie on a PMF system, you get exposed to a pulsating electromagnetic field which a very, with, with a very defined characteristic in terms of intensity level and frequency level. The characteristic is so good that it creates a very high resonating effect with almost each of your 70 trillion cells. And each cell inside your body will kick the ions, the membrane potential increases, your ability to absorb nutrients, minerals, oxygen increases. The result is you produce more ATP. So actually, you provide more energy inside your entire organism for the body to function properly, including supporting the immune system, supporting the hormone system, every little single uh, system in your, in, your, in your body will be supported by utilizing a PMF device. And that's why I say this is the most profound holistic modality nowadays to create a, a simultaneous effect on each of your 70 trillion cells. Does this make sense to you? And this is what this system does, not more and not less. This system is not designed to treat a disease but it is designed to shift situations and functions inside your entire body, which is probably, leads probably mostly then also to um, health benefiting effect 
no matter what people suffer from, because everything happens on a cellular level. It's much more profound than, you know, looking on, oh, I have a pain here, so I have to apply something here. Maybe the pain here is caused by a problem here, you know? So, more or less also a little bit the Chinese understanding about TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, the qi aspect, that everything is connected, and if we have a problem somewhere, maybe the cause of the problem is somewhere else. Uh, but what this system does, whenever there is a cell which uh, um, the, the, the membrane potential is not good enough, it tries to improve it. And nowadays we have even technology we can measure the membrane potential of a cell. And uh, uh, the, the, the numbers tells us that the average membrane potential of a healthy cell measured inside is about minus 70 millivolt. Minus because a, neg a, a, a cell is always negatively loaded inside. So the average healthy membrane potential of a healthy cell is minus 70 millivolt. And now listen, the average membrane potential of a professional athlete is about 100 millivolt, minus 100 millivolt. So it's, it's better. The average membrane potential of a heart cell is minus 120 millivolt. Remember when I asked the question about heart cancer? A heart cell can never turn into a malignant situation because the membrane potential of a heart cell is so high that it cannot go in a different direction. It's impossible. And if we measure a cancer cell, we are always below minus 30 millivolt. So, from an energetic perspective, cancer can only occur if we reach a certain benchmark in terms of the membrane potential. If we keep or if we maintain the membrane potential above this threshold, no malignant situation, no transformation. And with our systems, we are capable of initiating, supporting, and maintaining all fundamental meta metabolic processes by doing nothing else than creating a profound impact on the membrane potential of each of your 70 trillion cells. And resonance is the key. Do we know the various resonating frequencies of the organ system? Well, unfortunately, there are no studies that tell you that the kidney needs 12 hertz the, the lung needs 5 hertz whatsoever, but we know one thing, that the entire organs of our body, they respond within a certain frequency range at least. So, what we have to do is, we utilize the math mathematic measure which defines the likelihood that an event will occur, which is called probability. In layman terms, emit as many frequencies as possible, in order to hit a very high resonating effect, to cover everybody. That's like what I could do here, if I would have here in this room tonight 15 nationalities with 15 different languages, the chance that everybody understands me, what I'm talking tonight, will only be uh, a raise up to 100% if I would have 14 simultaneous translations in order to get the frequency in, in, in a resonating uh, effect with each of the language people don't understand. You know what I'm talking about. So, the more frequencies you offer, the higher the probability that you create a resonating effect. And the, the, the systems we use, they use so-called triple sawtooth uh, 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 waveforms and they create a lot of harmonic overwaves. You can see that. That's that's actually on the on the on this side. That's actually that's a sine wave now, when it looks looks like this. And what we do is we change the signal structure into a different waveform, and we create up to 25 harmonics of the basic frequency. So we increase the probability 200. 50, no, 
of emitting as many frequencies as possible in order to create a very high resonating effect. And this is more or less, this would be uh, the application when you lie on this whole body mat. This is more or less the way the electromagnetic fields are, uh, are hitting your entire organism when you do that. Is this understood so far? Good. I have a pretty cool video which shows you how resonance really works. So, these are 25 metronomes. So, this guy was... This guy was touched first here. And now, all of them, they will be randomly started. Makes noise, I know. I cannot control this even. I cannot control the noise. But, but what you can see, it's pretty chaotic, right? So every metronome is, is, is waving on its own frequency. But observe what happens over time. This was number one. Over time what happens is that all of the other, other metronomes they will go in resonance with this frequency and automatically align to it. Wait. You can see some of them already in sync, right? More and more. You can see it? Cool, huh? It, it, it happens by itself. So now you can see. Uh, he's a little bit out of sync. For some of them, it takes a little bit longer to, to resonate. And now, everybody is going in the same frequency. But there is always this one guy. That's the skeptical. So this guy tries to resist. But believe it or not, he has no chance. It's just a question of time when he will be forced by all the others to go in sync with the same frequency. Lost. And you know what's cool now? When all the informations, all these... Uh, I see this as single cells. When all these single cells are in sync with the first one, in our case the, the PMF system, they don't go out of sync anymore. They will stay there forever. Synchronize forever. So, it was a little bit noisy, sorry. But, but, but do you understand what I mean? So if I emit an information where the, the receiver is capable of taking this over, it's not only taking over the information, it keeps on utilizing it even if the, the sender would be already not working anymore, taking off. So that means if we uh, apply this idea for a PMF device, if you utilize a PMF application for about eight minutes, the resonating effect lasts between four to six hours. So actually, it only takes you eight minutes to create a therapy for four to six hours. Pretty cool. Because the cells are taking over the information and amplifying it and dealing with it on an ongoing basis. 
And that's the power of PMF technology. Pretty powerful. Um, here we're almost done. Here I uh, have some uh, also nice picture. It's a dark dark field microscopy. Um, what you see here are red blood cells. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen. So when the uh, uh, membrane potential of red blood cells are not really good, they look like this. They start sticking together. And when red blood cells stick together, they lose surface to absorb oxygen. So your SpO2 level, in, in, when I, I would measure it with this kind of cell picture from a dark field microscopy of you, would be not so, so good. Here we talk maybe about 93 to 96%. When you expose you, yourself to eight minutes of a PMF device, your red blood cells look like this. The membrane potential increases and they start to repelling. And while doing that, they increase the surface of absorbing oxygen. Does it make sense? And then they look like this. And that happens with every body of you. Like you can do that dark field microscopy within eight minutes. This is pretty profound. Did you get that so far? Was I able to translate all this physical stuff into a language that you more or less understood? Because that makes me really happy if I get a yes. <laughs> because that, that was my goal for the evening, um, to bring this to you. And uh, I'm very glad that uh, I have the impression that there was a lot of, oh yeah, now I get it. Oh yeah, interesting, you know. So. It was a lot of information, but you know, take it home. Don't use Google so much because there's so much crap <laughs> on that. You know, uh, if you want, look for specific things and um, give it a try. 